Friends in Christ, Pastor Brian here. A few weeks ago, I asked those who were worshiping with us to send me questions about God, the world, the church. And I decided that now is the time to begin answering those questions. The one for today is particularly appropriate given recent events. Why does God allow bad things to happen to people? The question raised is one that believers have struggled with for millennia. Just read the book of Job, and you'll find some of the ways faith, the faithful have answered that question. Now, given its breadth and complexity, understand that what I talk about here will most definitely not be one that contains every idea or thought on the subject. Consider it a brief overview. Now, there is support in Scripture and from our own founder, Martin Luther, for an understanding that God is, in a sense, the cause. That for some greater purpose, unknowable to us, God inflicts disease, disaster, sometimes even death. Sometimes, Scripture says, it is to punish. Look at the ten plagues in Exodus 7 through 12. Sometimes it is to test or to make someone stronger in a certain area of their life. You can see a reference to this in 1 Peter 4. What this understanding takes seriously is God's power and places complete trust that ultimately God's desire is for good for us. It's akin to a parent who lets a child suffer a negative consequence so that they might not do something again, or that they might grow in a certain area of their life in response to the challenge. Now, the question often raised with this understanding is whether this matches what we know of God's character. Throughout Scripture, God is pursuing relationship with humanity to save them from destruction. Would God really visit destruction upon us to do so? It also creates a problem for others who see this kind of response as abusive rather than loving. However, it is something that is found in Scripture and can provide comfort for some believers because it takes seriously that God is in charge. Others, however, would say that since humans broke this once close relationship we had with God, see Genesis and the Adam and Eve story, the consequence of that sin was that sickness, war, disease, and death was set loose in the world. That it's not God's desire that we suffer, but a result of our own action. War, after all, is a human activity brought on by human desires that do not conform with the kingdom of God. Disease and death are a reality because we no longer live in that once close relationship with God that we had. In short, death, disease, etc. are the visible reality of sin in the world. And they happen because someone is in the wrong place at the wrong time. Because the cell decides to multiply beyond control in our bodies. Because someone has smoked for 20 years. Now this response can be dissatisfying because it can remove God from the equation entirely. Everything is just purely random. Stuff happens. And it still raises the question, where is God when these things do happen? A response would be that as evidenced by Jesus, God is there with those who are suffering. That God is perhaps most present in those moments, just as God's love for us is best expressed by Jesus' suffering and death on the cross. The story of scripture is the story of God's pursuit of God's people to try and save us from things like war and violence, to restore our relationship with God and the world to what it was in the garden before Adam and Eve decided that they could make better decisions than God. And in Jesus Christ, God has done something. In Christ, we do have new life now and life everlasting in Christ, death and disease have no more hold over us. Okay, if this is the case, why is there still death and disease? Well, because what God has done has not been fully completed yet. We live in what is called the already, but not yet. 
Now, when someone asks why God allows bad things to happen, I tend to ask a follow-on question. Why do we allow it? Especially as followers of Jesus. If we truly believe that the church is the body of Christ on earth, that we as its members are the hands and feet of Christ, that we are a visible sign of the reign of God on earth, why do we allow these things to happen? If the murder of 21 people in an elementary school is not what God would desire, then why do we not work, act, speak, vote, lobby for things that would prevent it? Actions that correspond to the way in which Christ would pursue that goal. The question of why God allows something to happen assumes in some way that we have no agency or say in the matter at all, that God can't work in and through us to prevent death, harm, and disease. But we are created in God's image. And if we can create vaccines that save us from disease, we can work to create societies that help us all live fuller and more abundant lives. Now, ultimately, there is no good response to this age-old question, and even the answer I tend to land on now doesn't always satisfy, so I'll probably be asking a version of this question myself until the day I die. But here's what I do know. I know that death, disease, accidents, and other awful and difficult things happen every day to good and bad people alike. And I know that my calling as a follower of Jesus is to strive to alleviate that suffering, to work for a society that looks more like the reign of God rather than the reign of humans. The witness of Scripture is that God loves us enough to send God's own Son, Jesus, to die for us. The desire of God is for us to have life fuller and more abundant, and I know that my faith trusts that God's desire for me and for the world is for good. In the midst of the ambiguity that can arise when contemplating such deep and difficult questions, this is what I trust in and this is how I respond. I hope this was helpful. And if you'd like to have further conversation, I'd be more than happy to talk to you. God's blessings.